frozen oh, bones. Oh, I'm not in the middle of the ocean, and I'm surrounded by sharks. Me and my friends will be spending the next 24 hours inside a bikini bottle. This is gonna be so <laughs> For the next 24 hours, the biggest YouTubers in the world will be controlling my life. Kiss me, Matthew B. In this video, I will be building Mr. Beast, the world's largest candy bar. Mr. Beast, 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 Mr. Beast. It's been a while since I made a video like this, but honestly, I'm so sick to death of seeing these videos and videos like these videos. I know I could just simply not watch them, but I can't help myself. It is my guilty pleasure, except I derive absolutely no pleasure from it at all. This is Matthew Beam, and he is my least favoritist, most favoritist YouTuber. I shit you not, I have seen basically every single one of his videos uploaded in the last year, maybe three times. I can't justify why I do it, I just do. I just find the video so incoherent and devoid of basically anything, it's so funny. If you don't know who Matthew Beam is already, the best way I could describe him is he's like a YouTube NPC. He's like a human that's been kidnapped and reprogrammed by some sick and twisted YouTube obsessed villain to purely cater to the algorithm. Imagine you showed an AI every Mr. Beast video and every Mr. Beast style video and told it to make YouTube videos that perfectly conform to the YouTube algorithm and make them basically totally devoid of any personality or humanity and you'd have this content right here. I do want to clarify that I don't dislike Matthew. I have absolutely no reason to. He seems like a, he seems like a decent enough fellow. You have to separate the art from the artist. His art is just a bit artificial. <laughs> Ah, oh, subscribe. And the tragic thing is, a lot of his video ideas are genuinely good ideas. World's largest working computer. I built the Krusty Krab. I built the Batmobile using only cardboard. They're just executed in such a way they're borderline unwatchable to anyone with a brainstem. Now let's get a bit of backstory on the man, the legend. Matthias Beam started off as a Hypebeast YouTuber, which is always a good origin story. <laughs> Hypebeasts are a notoriously bearable bunch. Yeezys, more Yeezys, more Yeezys, more Oh, we got revealing my half a million dollar sneaker collection. God, this isn't gonna be totally unbearable to watch. In this video, we are going to be seeing my five hundred thousand dollar sneaker collection, seven fifteen thousand dollar a pair of Yeezys. Yes, fifteen thousand dollars. <laughs> Starting with $60 shoes and working our way up. Look, Matthew Beam really came from the trenches, didn't he? I'm so glad to see he's up now. These are a $60 pair of Vans. $60 Vans? This is a shoe that I'll never wear. I use them more as a display piece for art, and I love them so much. No, no, Matthew, Matthew, hang on. Do you do the, do you do the Yeezy? No, you're disgusting, Matthew. I know earlier I said you got to separate the art from the artist, but I can't do that here, Matthew. I'm sorry. You got a bape clock. He got, <laughs> he's got the fucking, you know, like the, the beads you walk through to go to another room. He's got that supreme. Christ. Mom, can I borrow some hundreds? <laughs> Damn, as I said, Matthew, he really came from the trenches. It's good to see a true working class bloke make it. Matthew! How old is Matthew Bean? This was one year ago. Matthew Beam is 25. Matthew, these antics are what I'd expect of a 16-year-old. You're, tw you're 24. You're 24. My favorite pair of shoes, the Red October. I remember the day when this shoe came out. I was in high school. It sold out in seconds. I saved up for a long time, and I bought this shoe right here. And then I eventually got addicted and bought seven of them. Just for clarity, those shoes are about 30 grand a pair. Why do you have seven pairs of 30 grand shoes, Matthew Beam? These are probably one of the most uncomfortable shoes I've ever worn in my oh, life. Oh, uh, yeah, so you bought seven of them? You bought seven of them? Not really a great reason why I have seven. I just love them a lot. Like, <laughs> Oh no, he's got that complex post printed out on his wall. Oh, Matthew. Now, since his days as an epic hype beast, he's become a mega YouTube celebrity and now makes like three different types of videos on his channel. One of the types is Mr. Beast. He loves Mr. Beast. Building stuff for creators and just miscellaneous. So we're gonna watch a few of his videos. Like, it's not gonna be easy, I'm gonna warn you now. You'd think because these videos are super fast paced that would make them more attentive, no, they just give me a migraine. So let's start off with one of my favorites. I searched Mr. Beast Island and found this. Prepare yourself. There it is. That's Mr. Beast Island. Wow, this is going to be insane. We're going to be spending the next few days deserted on this island with no one to help us. Our boat driver is literally leaving. Okay, 
very fast paced intro and that's fine I get it you know you gotta hook the viewers in in the first few seconds I totally get that but the thing is this is basically how the whole video is paced it is utterly painful hey, what's, up? what's up Jimmy on my island is buried a treasure chest I may or may not have buried it but there's a treasure chest there Matthew good luck finding it. what ah yes a very real and human conversation between two buddies it's like two Elder Scrolls NPCs trying to talk to each other buried treasure on Mr. Beast Island I am going to find that so because this is mr beast island and it has so many amazing things to explore like the beaches that has pigs two different caves and apparently a buried treasure we should probably start looking around Bro, my guy speaks in keywords he speaks like an algorithm it's so robotic and non-human it's utterly fascinating to me did you hear that there's something massive over those bushes this is like a legit jungle it's really crazy to think that we're the only ones on this island right now i think my main grievance with this video is there's no and i hate this word banter between anyone in the video the most we get is something like, oh, I'm not qualified to do this. We are not qualified to be doing this. It's literally lower than Marvel level humor. But they're on a fucking deserted island in the middle of nowhere. They could have made such a funny video. This could have been such a good video. But Matthew Beeman rather make something totally inane that has a slightly better number for the YouTube algorithm to go off than make something actually good. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand the importance of retention, but I think there's, there's a fine balance between catering to the YouTube algorithm and making something that humans can actually connect to, whether that be through humor or just being a bit more personable. Like these videos just jump from place to place to place to place to place as they explain what's going on and that is basically it. But before we search for the treasure, we still have so many other things to find like Mr. Beast Wild Pigs and the Secret Cave. I don't know what it is about the fact he describes them as Mr. Beast Wild Pigs that annoys me. It's like, what, what is it that makes them Mr. Beast Wild Pigs? They're on the fucking island he bought for a video. Are the rats that are living in my walls meme us rats? Someone please tell me. Because it's high tide right now, we can't see the cave. Oh, that's the Mr. Beast cave, is it? Yeah? I'm giving one person who subscribes right now whatever is in Mr. Beast treasure chest and a thousand dollars. Since you're subscribed, you just want a thousand dollars. No, Dad, I just want a thousand dollars. Everybody subscribed to win a thousand dollars. I find it so weird when YouTubers use this method of getting you to subscribe with like a chance of winning money. It's like one step down from just bribing them. Like you're just getting people to subscribe not because they like your videos, but because they want a grand. Surely that's just not a good idea in the long run. Like just having loads of subscribers on your channel that aren't there for you but are there because they wanted to win money at some point. Also something else I find so funny about this bit like 70 to 80 percent of the people that win these giveaways can't be above the age of like 10 years old and to be fair you can't be much older than that and manage to sit through one of these videos. We are exhausted. Let's get some sleep guys. We will see you guys in the morning. What you're telling me you fell asleep on sand and used rocks as pillows for the entire night. All right, mate. Yeah, all right. I am currently standing on top of this rock that Brian is inside of on Mr. Beast Cave. This man isn't a human. Like, no, nobody fucking talks like this. Why is he saying it as if it's an intro? We're fucking eight minutes into the video. Since I'm on Mr. Beast Island, I thought I should mention- Oh, what? You're on Mr. Beast Island looking for the Mr. Beast treasure in the Mr. Beast Cave with the Mr. Beast pigs. And you know Mr. Beast as well? Oh. Fucking hell, you never mentioned. And my good friend, Mr. Beast, is extremely close to hitting 100 million subscribers. So I'm making it my personal goal to help him reach 100 million. Oh my God, just suck him off already. So I left Mr. Beast's path and I am in the middle of the jungle and I have no idea where to go. I know I mentioned it already, but I fucking hate how he prefaces everything with Mr. Beast. Not Mr. Beast's, Mr. Beast. He just came off the Mr. Beast path. It's enraging. It enrages me. I found it. Let's see what's inside. There's a bunch of sand and a piece of paper. What does it say? Congratulations. Congratulations, now subscribe to Mr. Beast. What? Well, that was an epic ending, one for the grandchildren for sure. The next banger we're gonna be looking at is I built Bella Porch a giant stuffed animal. Sick! I can't wait for it. Bella Porch is currently working on another massive music video. So to celebrate, I'm gonna surprise her on set with a giant version of her iconic alpaca. <gasps> Bloody hell, that was limbs. I am for sure gonna stick around till the end of the video to see what she reacted like that to. Fucking hell, Bella, being realistic, you need to calm down a little bit. Oh my god. I might have to call the authorities and get them involved for disorderly conduct. I would only react like that if I had just won the lottery. To be fair, I do have to rate how Bella kind of half tries to pretend to care about this sort of stuff. Like when Dream was calling people to show them his face before he posted his face reveal, she, she, she couldn't even pretend to care. You should have kept the mask on. Bella's one of my favorite creators. Is she now, Matthew? We're gonna be putting our massive alpaca in the same outfit Bella wore in her music video, Build a Bad Word. Oh, you pussy, Matthew. Just say the bad word. Say bitch, Matthew. Go on, you won't. Go on, do it. Do it for me. On the way to the store right now to buy every single pillow they have. 
These pillows are seven dollars, <laughs> and I have to buy every single one of them. That seems like a, a perfectly reasonable price for pillows. I don't know how much you're expecting them to be, Matthew. Now that we have all our pillows, we're gonna start cutting them open and getting all of the fluff out. But Matthew, before we cut them open, there's something I've always wanted to do. That was pretty lame, I'm not gonna lie. Fuck me, all his mates are so boring. He's speaking like he's high. There's something I've always wanted to do. I know I basically haven't shown them throughout this video, but here's a few clips of when Matthew permits his friends to speak on camera. So what color are we gonna build? We can't just build one. That was terrifying. The treasure is gonna make all of this worth it. And I think our best bet is to get one of these plush alpacas. Not sure if they're all really boring or if Matthew just forbids them from showing any form of personality, but oh my God, man. If you allowed yourself time to breathe in these videos, had a laugh, for your friends. These videos would be so much better because you're doing interesting stuff. It's just the way you make and edit these videos it makes it so boring. Like it may not be better from a YouTube algorithm NPC standpoint, but definitely from a viewer above the age of 12 standpoint. Like, honestly, if videos like this are the new meta on this website, it has a fucking bleak future. Now, believe it or not, there's actually a reason why a lot of YouTubers these days adopt no personality or very bland or safe on-screen personality. Mr. Beast did a video a while back where he said this about Emma Chamberlain and the fact her content is very personality based. It is entertaining. Like, she's a naturally funny person. At the same time, you're limited by your personality. She's doing well. She's just top 1% of creators. It's like, great. Yeah. It's phenomenal. Yeah. But it's like, there's only so big that can take you. She's tied down to her personality. If you don't like Emma, then you're not going to watch her videos. Now, this does make sense. It makes complete sense for someone like Mr. Beast who wants to cast as wide a net as possible. He's trying to get his videos to appeal to everyone on the planet, like other languages, different cultures, different humans. I just personally find it so dystopian that YouTubers who are initially supposed to be anti-establishment and the antithesis of soulless mainstream media are now looking to become that exact same thing, if not even more soulless. This isn't me knocking Jimmy or even Matthew really, it's just an observation that I, I honestly can't pretend to like. It's just not the YouTube I fell in love with, it's corporate. You don't look at a Matthew Beam video and go, oh yeah, I could do that. Because to be able to do something like what he does, you'd need a lot of starting capital. And I feel like that feeling of anyone can do it is what makes YouTube what it is. Obviously, this was the natural development of YouTube and I'd be ignorant to think it wouldn't be, but fucking hell, man. Surely, Matthew Beam isn't the way. Come on now. It's so big that you can't even see Ben's behind it. I'm here. It probably weighs 300 pounds, literally. After weeks of planning and work, it's time to finally deliver this to her. I mean, it's pretty big, but like, you're just setting the audience up for disappointment with that thumbnail. It's not much bigger than those stuffed toys you win at like Winter Wonderland or something. So we just made it to the airport. The guys are currently driving all the way to California in horror weather and now it's time for us to catch a flight. This is my favorite bit about Matthew Bean building videos. He'll get his mates to transport whatever they built halfway across the fucking country by car and he'll just jump on a plane. <laughs> It's so unintentionally funny. Then he just gives Bella Porch the, the thing and they hug the end. But then, disaster struck. Matthew went on a video called Pro Editor Reacts to Matthew Beam's Worst Video by Hilia Smith, who's Logan Paul's editor. Hilia basically said his, his editing was shit. And it seems as though he took that advice into account for a few videos. Like, look at these openings. This is the world's cheapest five-star hotel. And for only $29 a night, it includes a private pool, gourmet meals, and the world's craziest experiences. This is America's most haunted at home, The Conjuring House. A place so haunted, most people can't even last an hour. In comparison to these openings. Me and my friends will be spending the next 20 years in this video. video. This and these videos were actually decent, I'd say. But for some weird reason, he decided to do a U-turn on this idea of making coherent videos. Maybe he felt as though they weren't getting enough views. I don't know. And he made testing 100 science experiments in 24 hours, and it is a fucking mess. It is one of the worst paced YouTube videos I think I've ever seen in my life. Today I'll be testing 100 science experiments, starting with giant Mentos and Coke. Whoa! Okay, this isn't a big deal or anything, but actually that's not coca mentos, that's uh, elephant's toothpaste. We're gonna be doing an elephant toothpaste volcano. Whoa! We're gonna be doing one later on in this video 10 million times the size. It's, it's just not though, is it? Also, half the experiments here are just elephant toothpaste done again. So surely they don't count. You can't just do the same experiment over and over again. So you failed, Matthew Beam. I should also mention this Tesla has automatic driving. Let's try it out. Oh my god. Oh! 
That's not a fucking science experiment, is it, Matthew? That's like me turning on my computer and going on Reddit and being like, oh, look at me, I did a science experiment by going on the internet. Now, admittedly, up to this point, it's paced fine, there's no personality or anything, but, you know, it's, it, it's competent. Then it goes to absolute shit about four minutes in. Now, I'm gonna play about 40 seconds of footage here, and I have a challenge for you at the end. Try not to get a headache. What are you making here? I'll be doing cotton balls and milk. Coke and Mentos underwater. Testing if any of these substances will repel the validity. The holy bottle experiment. Play-Doh. Should I be nervous? Possibly. We're gonna make it blue? We just put seven holes in this milk jug. This toothpick, a regular one. Nothing's happening. When I take this top off, it should go everywhere. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, wow, this is actually real Play-Doh. That was awesome. This guy's smart. That's super sweet. I was not expecting that. That was sick. Whoa. Oh, I failed. Okay, so here is my challenge. Tell me half of what just happened. Yeah, that, that's definitely slime. That is so cool. Oh, man. I have to say, this is actually really cool. <laughs> He's not even pretending he cares at this point. Right now, we're gonna knock out 20 experiments at once. This is Elephant Toothpaste Rainbow Edition. Oh, what the heck? That is the most beautiful thing I have ever seen in my life. Wait, 20 of the same experiment you've already done in this video multiple times. You're taking the piss. Don't take the piss, Matthew. You're gonna make me really cross. If you subscribe right now, you can win $1,000 just like this. Hello? Oh, hi. <laughs> that, that, that child is like five years old. <laughs> Oldest Matthew Beam enjoyer. This is the moment we've been waiting for. We have done 99 experiments so far. <laughs> the build up to that was so fucking poor. Like, it's supposed to be the big end of video bit, but you're just like, okay, here we are. We're gonna do the, we're gonna do the big experiment. And then you just cut to it. Oh, it's so shit. It's so shit. We just did 100 science experiments. That's it for this video. New videos every Tuesday. Ah! So, just sort of conclude this video. Matthew Beam keeps his videos as bland and inoffensive as possible to have the broadest appeal he can. There's nothing you could come out of a Matthew Beam video thinking other than, oh, that was a big chocolate bar, or oh, that was a lot of money. They're vapid, and the only pull of them is the spectacle. I said earlier in this video about how YouTube is becoming more and more high budget and corporate, and I just want to elaborate on that a little bit, because I don't think all higher budget content is bad, because that would be a really black and white way of looking at things. The best example I can think of at the moment would be the beta squad, like, not to suck them off or anything. But over the years, their videos have become more and more high budget. But most of the pull of their videos isn't like the budget or the, the spectacle of the videos. People just want to see friends having a laugh and that's what that channel provides. If these videos had no budget, they'd likely be just as entertaining because it's not about the spectacle, it's about the connection between them in the videos and them in the audience. There is absolutely none of that in Matthew B videos. They just talk like NPCs to each other and then he borderline bribes people to subscribe to his channel. Matthew B videos are literally all about spectacle. And, and putting big name in title. There is nothing personable about a Matthew Bean video. You can't see yourself in his shoes, and unless you're rich, you can't make videos like him. If you strip Matthew Beam of all his money, he'd have nothing to pull you into his videos. Like, don't get me wrong, they're impressive, but they're just so incredibly vapid. When every moment is so fast-paced, they're talking like this, and there's, there's no shit ever happening every three seconds, none of it is impactful at all, it's just a messy, incoherent fucking collage. It's the slower moments that help build up and make the good moments so much better. You've got to allow room to breathe, have a laugh. I know it may not be the best thing for the completely devoid of any humanity at all algorithm, but it will benefit your channel in the long run, Matthew, because you'll have people that actually watch your videos for you, and not because you went to Mr. Beast Island to find Mr. Beast treasure and went in Mr. Beast's cave to suck off Mr. Beast.